Hey everyone, welcome back again to another Flutter tutorial. And in this session, we will look into how to locally store the data in a Flutter app with help of Flutter Secure Storage. So this Flutter Secure Storage Pack is going to be more or less similar to the SAD preferences what we have already discussed in previous videos. If anybody is new to this video or if you don't have idea of what SAD preference actually is, then you can go check the video by clicking the link at the card at the top right, where we have explained about what SAD preferences and how to use SAD preferences in our Flutter app. Today's session, we will look into how to implement Flutter Secure Storage. And this is going to be more likely the replica of the SAD preferences. So the Flutter Secure Storage helps us store data locally in the form of key value pair, which is more likely similar to the SAD preferences. But with the difference is that here in the Flutter Secure Storage package, we have an additional layer of security where it is not the case while working with SAD preferences. In SAD preferences, the data are stored the same way in the form of key value pair, but there is no layer of security over there in SAD preferences. The data are more likely vulnerable, or if you are someone who is thinking of storing more crucial data like the username or password locally in your Flutter app, then consider going for Flutter Secure Storage. And today's session, I will walk you through how to store data locally with the help of Flutter Secure Storage and at the same time, how to read that data which is stored locally. And finally, we will also link into how to delete the data which is stored securely in the Flutter Secure Storage. Alright, hope you got a better understanding of what we are about to discuss in this video. With this idea and without any further delay, let's directly jump into the coding part and start the implementation process. And this is going to the package which we have been talking right now, Flutter Secure Storage. And always check for the latest version. Here they have provided that this package provides the API to store the data in a secure storage. It uses the keychain in iOS and key store in case of Android. In case of Android, if you want to have an encrypted storage, then you can set this flag variable as true. So we will also look into how to do that in our implementation process. Just to have a quick summary, we will look into this package documentation. Here they have also provided with few code snippets for reading and how to write the data in a secure storage and at the same time how to delete the data that is stored locally. So this Flutter Secure Storage accepts all the data types just like string, integer, double, list of strings etc. Just the same way what we have for SAD preferences. Here they have also mentioned that the minimum SDK version needs to be somewhat greater than or equal to 18 for this package. Okay. So make sure that the minimum SDK version in your project is set to 18 or greater than 18. Now let's head over to the VS Code and start with the implementation process. First let's try to understand this Flutter Secure Storage with the help of a simple example. We have a Flutter app here which uses the Flutter Secure Storage to store the data what we enter here in the input field. And we have three buttons placed one below the other. The first button is going to store the data which is entered here in the test form field. And second button is going to read the data which is already stored in this Flutter Secure Storage. And the final button is going to be the delete button which will delete the data that has been stored in the Flutter Secure Storage. So let's have a quick demo. Let me enter some data over here in this input field. And upon pressing this store data, it is going to store the data locally in our Flutter app. Consider we have stored this data which is the string value of Flutter in the Secure Storage. Now let's try to read the data which is stored locally in the Secure Storage. Upon clicking this, here in the debug console, it provides us with the data that has been stored securely in the Flutter Secure Storage. And if you try to delete this data, once again try to read that, you see, we have now deleted the data and there is no data found in the Secure Storage. And once again, if you store the data and read it, you again get that same data being displayed here in the debug console. So this is basically what we are about to build in this video tutorial. Therefore, fasten your seatbelt and let's get started. First let's start by adding the package in the perspec and the package is going to be Flutter Secure Storage and as for the video recording date the latest version is going to be 8.0.0. After adding this package let's move over to the main.dat file. Here in the main.dat file we have made use of generated routes where the initial route points to home page as you can see the initial route points to home page. Here the home page is going to be a stateful widget class where we have an input field which is a text form field. We have also created a controller for the same and we have initialized the controller in the init state and, and also disposed the controller in the disposed state to prevent memory leaks. Here in the build method we have an empty scaffold. Now let's start by building up the UIs. First let's try to build up the app bar. Here the build app bar is going to be a custom defined function that is in turn a generic build method. Now after the app bar here in the body we try to have a column widget and the first child is going to be the icon 
followed by which we have a simple text widget and followed by few spacing we have the input field which is going to be a text form field. So this text form field builder is again going to be a custom defined class which we have written down separately inside this components folder. Right? Basically we have this components folder where we will try to write all the generic methods like the app bar, text form field, buttons. Okay, So we try to group them separately inside the components folder. So this text form field builder class is going to technically render the text form field widget available in Flutter just by passing the controller as a parameter over to it. After the text form field, let's try to have a button and this primary button once again as it explained it is going to render the elevated button widget by passing the button text as well as the on press function. So for now let's leave the on press event as empty and let's create two more buttons for reading and deleting the data from the Flutter secure storage. Second button is going to read the data and finally we have a delete button to delete the data which is stored in the Flutter secure storage. So for now we try to have an empty button press event therefore even if you click this it is no way going to do any process. In order to provide the implementation for storing the data as well as reading and deleting the data let's create a separate dart file for the secure storage for reading and writing the data. Hence under the lib folder here inside the data folder we have the secure storage dart file. And here in this file is where we are going to write the logic for storing, retrieving as well as deleting the data from the secure storage. First let's try to import the package and here let's create a class called secure storage wherein we create an instance for Flutter secure storage. So this Flutter secure storage is something which we get as a result of the package installation. Followed by which we create three methods for reading, writing as well as deleting data from the secure storage. And all these methods are going to be an asynchronous functions. For writing secure data, we need to pass the key and value. And we can make use of the method which is storage.writeoff. This storage is nothing but the instance of Flutter secure storage. Alright, just the same way for reading the data, we just need to pass the key alone. So here in the read secure data method, if no value is found for this provided key, then we try to map it with the string which is no data found. Followed by the read data. We try to delete the data with the help of the delete method just by passing the key alone. Now we have created the logic for reading, writing as well as deleting the data from the secure storage. Now what we need to do is we need to call this respective functions upon the on press event of this elevated buttons. Therefore let's head over to the home page. Here in the home page for the store data method we need to call the write data method available in the secure storage class and pass in the key and the value. Here the key we have provided as the name and the value what we have provided is the text controller value what the user enters over here in the input field. Similarly for reading the data we will try to call the read secure data method available in the secure storage class by passing the key which is the name. And finally for deleting the data we call the delete secure data method just the same way we need to pass the key over here. By doing so we will be able to write, read and delete the data from the secure storage. So this is not just limited to any string values you can go for storing any list of strings, boolean, integer values so on and so forth just the same way what we used to have for sad preferences. Alright so let's refresh this app and try running it. Here let me provide some data. First, before storing the data, let's try reading the data. It provides us with the data which we have previously entered during the demo process, which is Flutter. Since we haven't deleted that, we try to get the same data here. First, let's delete the data and try reading any data. Now we have no data found. Since we have cleared the local storage data, let's now try storing the fresh data. And try reading the same. We have the Flutter secure storage being retrieved from the local storage. Let's try to delete the data and read it we get the no data form which means that we have successfully configured adding flutter secure storage in our flutter app and it is running in the way it is expected hope you got a better understanding of how to make use of flutter secure storage to store the data locally in a more secure manner in a flutter app if you found this tutorial useful consider subscribing and i will see you again in the next video